I kind of relate to a footballer. You know, I think back in our day when I played football, if he was like something more, yeah, you know, you probably get cough medicine, they give you some fix. We never really looked at the small writing mm. to see what actually was in that kind of supplement. Did you know what you could and couldn't take? Were you no, we acutely didn't. aware of it? No, no, did not have a, didn't have a cue, a, a clue. Sorry, so it was just like right, cough medicine, take this. It was given by your your physio or you know your doctor. There was nothing like, oh, well, this is in it, so you can't take this, you can't take this, you can't take this. Nowadays, it's a lot more stringent. Not nowadays, as I say, knowing that my son, Thomas, was at Watford, you know, he's suffers from asthma and all that type of stuff and hay fever. He's got to look at the stuff that he can take and what's in it. He uh, does that himself. He's not the, giving it to bother the club the doctor 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 when they say... say... They say, we can't take this because it's got certain things in it. Yeah. So, you know, he has to take a certain thing for hay fever. Um, but in our time, that wasn't the case. That really wasn't the case. And um, we never knew what was in it. We just we just knew that it worked for us, you know. So, um, um, but now there's a lot. I think it's very very stringent. I think as a manager, when I'm on the football pitch and I'm coaching, you see, all of a sudden you turn around and you see four doping people waiting to take the players off the pitch. And I, I mean, from as soon as you finish the training session, those doping people are not leaving that designated player, and they follow them into the canteen, they follow them into the change room until they actually go to the toilet to get a sample, they are not leaving that person. So and do you think that football's doping testing regime is open to scrutiny or is it properly up to scratch? Is it properly as yeah, stringent as you yeah, can get? I think it's probably up to scratch. I mean, we're, apart from obviously the Paul Pogba situation, um, which, we're, which we're obviously we're going to mention talk about later on, but I think it's, from what I gather, it's very, very stringent. I think it's done very, very right. I'm really, really what, what did you make of the Paul Pogba situation? Because being banned for, for four years is quite some, is quite mm. some suspension. It probably will end up finishing his top-level career, if nothing else. What will his legacy be? Um, and has it damaged it? Well, has, well, has he got a legacy? That's the thing you've got to ask yourself, because... He's won a World Cup. Yeah, but what I'm saying, when you kind of look at Paul Pogba now and, you know, the four-year bans can obviously change the way people perceive Paul Pogba. Now, from what I gather, is that obviously the, the stuff supplement that he took was outside the football club. But if I'm right, I might be wrong, but I think I'm, think I'm right. Mm. So, obviously... Apparently it was given to him by a doctor in Miami, that's what he's suggesting, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. So, you know, that, that, that doesn't look great, in, you know, for Paul Pogba. You know, he, he should know better. You know, if he's taking stuff from a doctor that he doesn't really know in Miami, then I know the Italian doctors. I worked in Italy. They're so thorough. They do things right, everything. So if this happens to turn into a four-year ban for Paul Pogba, then I think that's going to be his legacy. I don't think it's going to change. And Paul Pogba, for me, has been potentially could be one of the greatest players of all time. The greatest player, one of, as a midfield player, you know, from obviously from winning the World Cup in 2018, you know, what he did at uh, Juventus, winning four Serie A titles, a couple of Copa Italias. If I look at an all-round midfield player, what would I expect from him? I'd expect someone like Paul Pogba. Six foot two, six foot three, two great feet, can score goals, can get up and down the park, can tackle. All the actually boots that you want from a midfield player. And, you know, when he left Juventus to go back to United, um, I'm not sure that was the right move. I think Juventus were flying. I think he was flying at Juventus. Didn't need to go back there. Um, the issues with Mourinho that came out, you know, they didn't get on. There was an ego battle between the two of them. Um, and then under Oli, he started to thrive a bit under Oli. And then obviously moved back to Juventus where, you know, he's not, he's not played since February. So, and if this hangs over him at the age of 31, 32, I think he's, you're talking 36, you know, you're not saying that his career's over. Listen, he might go and play in Saudi at 36. He might go and play the MLS. But as far as remembering Paul Pogba, yes, you remember him as a 2018 World Cup winner. But this hangs over his head. You know, it wouldn't be a nice legacy to think about. Um, Graham Sinis uh, has been criticised uh, and has been criticising Paul Pogba often during his career, uh, and he was talking to uh, Simon on their podcast in regards to Paul Pogba. Why I was critical of him, he had the equipment to be the best midfield player in the world. And I saw a young man who was going through emotions a lot of the time, and that frustrated me. With that physique, with the technical ability, he just didn't have the right attitude to the game to make him become a superstar. The, the worst thing that happened to him winning a World Cup where he could turn and say I'm a World Cup winner I think at that point it was him going backwards 
Uh, that was um, on the Simon and Sunes show, which I think is uh, out at one o'clock, is it, today on YouTube? That's all right. Yeah, it is indeed. Um, you'll be able to see that. And um, Incy was uh, in today because uh, Graham's not here. Um, he also said uh, what you said, didn't he, there, about Ooh. being a great uh, a player that probably um, could have been better than he was. He, he says in his mail column this week as well, Graham, he says, I criticise Paul Pogba often during his career and some people seem to take amusement from it. But actually, it was only sadness that I felt this week when I learned that he has been banned for football for four years for a doping offence. For me, there was never really any doubt about Pogba's ability. What I saw was a player <coughs> with great technical ability and physique who had the potential to be one of the best midfield players our sport had ever known. Do you feel like that? Yeah, I do. I do, and I think it's a bit like, you know, someone mentioned about Dylan White, you know, getting, getting cleared of, of his drug issues, and, and hopefully Paul Pogba can do the same because, I mean, four years is a long time. So it's a big, big, it's a hefty ban. You know, I mean, we were talking about some athlete taking the same drug, DR, and they've got a six-month ban. Mm. Paul Pogba's got four months, four years, sorry. Are they setting an example? I don't know. But one thing about Pogba... No, it's a default setting. Is it? With a WADA, with a drug fail um, under WADA, it's a four-year ban, and then you do it on appeal. And if you can provide enough coherent evidence as to the yeah. reasons why this was not something you took as a regime and it was a mistake, then you'll get it reduced to perhaps two and lower. Mm. But he, he's done, isn't he? Even if he gets it down to two years, he's done mm. in mainstream mm. football. But it's well, not just that, Sam. Look at the way. You, look at the situations that the boy's got himself in. He's got his brother blackmailing him. Yeah, he's had a terrible time. Aren't right, aren't mm. yeah. no. uh, the way the whole the whole saga, the Pogba saga, has run since since the middle of that Manchester United period, I think, has uh, has been very difficult. But you've for heard him. from two of the greatest midfielders that this Isles have produced. Sunes and Poins about their Exciting same view, virtues, yeah. their same view, which is that he had all the equipment to be the, one yeah. of the best players that, that stepped on the field <clears> in that position. <throat> and Graham's frustration and people ridiculed it and parried it and said Sunes' obsession with Pogba. You don't waste time on people that you have no regard for. Mm. You only comment on people that you think, God, my God, look at this. You could be doing this and you're yeah. doing that. So you've heard from him, Paul, and you've heard from Graham saying pretty much the same thing. He had all the equipment to be the best player in the world or in that position. And he's kind of not been, not delivered outcomes mm. that could have been, you know, when there's nothing worse than waste, is there? When you when someone's got talent and you mm. waste it, that's the most frustrating thing. And Chelsea hoping not to waste the talent that they've acquired over the course of the last couple of years. Their fans certainly weren't happy on Saturday at Brentford. Uh, we'll talk about that in the next few minutes. You're listening to White and Jordan on TalkSport with Selco Builders Warehouse. It's where the trade go. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.